Hey, get the written directions for this project and seven other egg preservation techniques by following the link below. Hey everybody, this is Carolyn from Homesteading Family and I am so excited to share this egg preservation technique with you today because, well honestly, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a, a preservation technique that's been lost to history in a lot of ways. Now we know that this was common many years ago. We even know that General George Washington used this technique to preserve some of his eggs. I don't know if that's how he did most of his eggs or not. And um, this is just a wonderful thing that has now been confirmed by science to be incredibly healthy and incredibly safe. And it also makes a better end product than if you didn't preserve the eggs this way. And that is aged eggnog. That's right. We are going to make eggnog right now in the springtime when we've got all these eggs coming in from the chickens. And we're going to put it on a cool shelf for months until we want it come fall or winter time. You can really have eggnog any time of year that you want, but traditionally, of course, it's being drunk around Christmas time. If you enjoy eggnog at Christmas, this is a great way to go. Now, the reason this works is because we're gonna take these great eggs that we have, and these are fresh eggs, um, and we are going to preserve them in enough alcohol that nothing bad can survive. And scientists have recently proven that if you use enough alcohol that um, it will completely sterilize anything that is bad in the eggs. Even intentionally put in uh, salmonella gets completely sterilized after two to three weeks. So this is a wonderful way to use eggs that maybe came out of the chicken coop dirty. Um, maybe you only have access to store-bought eggs. Uh, a lot of the egg preservation techniques that we have talked about in the past are not appropriate for store-bought eggs, eggs that have been washed, or dirty eggs. But this one you can use with everything. And that's because after a few weeks, nothing is going to survive in this. So you can even put those questionable eggs in there. So we're going to start off with a dozen eggs. Now, I have this particular recipe all ready to go here for you guys, but um, you can take your family's favorite eggnog recipe and use the same technique in order to um, in order to save your particular recipe. All you need to do is make sure that you use one and a half ounces of 80 proof or higher alcohol per egg in order to store it safely for the long term. Now what's great about making eggnog this way is not only does it store your eggs from spring, but the finished eggnog, once it's been aged, has a much, much better flavor. It actually smooths it, mellows it, and kind of deepens that flavor. So. We are just cracking right now one dozen eggs into a bowl. And I've got my recipe here on hand so that um, I make sure I give you the right kinds of alcohol at the right time. And we're just cracking this. Now you can do this in any amount. You can scale this up or scale this down. That is just fine. Um, if you find that you think you're gonna have a bunch of Christmas parties and maybe you'd like a lot of eggnog, then um, you may want to do several of these jars. So I have a dozen of these eggs here and I am going to put in one and a half cups of bourbon. This is 80 proof and a half a cup of cognac. Now cognac can be a little pricey so if you don't want to spend that much you're welcome to just uh, replace the cognac with more of the bourbon. And then a third cup of a dark rum. Again, all of these are at least 80 proof. And then I'm going to add one and a half cups of sugar. I am going to go ahead and mix this up really well. Now, I find the trick to this is to really whisk this extremely well. You want this really well incorporated. If you have a blender on hand, you may wanna go ahead and just stick it into the blender for a few seconds and really mix it up. That, um, make sure that the texture at the end is gonna be really good. 
Okay, I've been whisking this for probably about five minutes now, and the texture has totally changed. It's become very light. That sugar has thoroughly dissolved in here. It's a much thinner feel than when I first started, and that's really what you're looking for. There is no separation whatsoever between the yolks and the whites, and so we are ready to go on to the next step. All right, now I have this clean quart size jar. And um, I thought this was a fun shape. Isn't this a great, this is one of those old jars that you can find from maybe sometimes elderly neighbors who can, who've been canning for years. That's where I got one of these and it's a lot of fun. All we're gonna do is make sure that you're starting with a very clean jar. It does not need to be sterilized, however, because again, the alcohol in this is gonna sterilize everything. And we're just gonna go ahead and use a funnel to pour that right on in. Now there's quite a bit of foam in there, so I'm gonna to have to wait for a few minutes for that to settle. But as soon as I can get that all the way filled, and here I have the flat of an actual two-piece canning lid, and I have one of the plastic storage lids, and I'm gonna go ahead and just pop that flat right into this plastic storage lid. And what that does is it creates a, um, a rubber seal there, so it's actually airtight. The plastic storage lids just aren't airtight. This is a great trick for if you need to take um, waters in a car and you don't want to deal with those metal rings or anything like that, that you can just pop one of those flat lids right in the bottom of that and then screw that right on. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on pretty tight and I'm going to go ahead and set this back on a cool pantry shelf in a dark spot. Now alternately, if you're more comfortable with it, you can certainly put this into a refrigerator. Make sure before you do that, you take your Sharpie and you label this. You want the date, you want the contents, you want to know what this is because if you do this now and you wait all the way till Christmas before you drink it, you're going to forget what this stuff is long before you ever get around to drinking it. You will not want to take the next steps to actually make this into an eggnog until at least three weeks have passed. What those three weeks do is, one, it gives it a chance to mellow out those flavors, make the alcohols a little smoother, um, but two, and more importantly, is it gives the alcohols a chance to sterilize this. So that is why you can take those store-bought eggs that may actually be questionable as to whether they're safe or not to consume raw, and you can do this leave it in storage for two to three weeks, and um, then you can consume them in this raw form. Now, when we come back in about three weeks, we're gonna go ahead and make the actual eggnog. So we're gonna put this back on a pantry shelf, and I will see you in three weeks time. Hey, we've been talking about preserving eggs. To get a copy of my free 16 page guide on preserving eggs, follow the link below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and share. Thank you guys!